On today's episode, we are back in the area of downtown Honolulu to explore some amazing eateries. There are some hidden gems that we've been wanting to try here in downtown. And it's usually more for the people that work in the area. But since today, Felix has a day off on a weekday, we thought it is a perfect opportunity to check them out. So let's get exploring and let's get to eating. What's going on Foodie Ohana and welcome back to the channel. Our first stop is a place we missed last time we were here. We're back here at the Fort Street Mall area of downtown. We did feature Marugame Udon and Yi Fong Tea here, Fort Street Cafe. So it was awesome eateries. A lot of you mentioned we did miss a Piroshki spot. So we are back here to try that. So that'll be our first stop. Let's hope it's still open. Yes, please. All right, Foodie Ohana. Our first stop is Rada's Piroshki. And a lot of you said we missed this spot last time, but they were closed. And it looks like they share a venue with Vicky's Filipino food. So I'm not sure if it's a separate entity or the same thing. Look at that big bag. Yes, look at this Ooh. big bag. We got one of each because we want to showcase a little bit of everything for you guys here. The more elongate, holy! Bro, these things are huge. Okay, I did not expect that. The only time we had Piroshki was in Seattle at Piroshki Piroshki. Those were divine. So she did mention the elong more elongated Piroshkis are the beef variants. If you guys didn't know, Piroshki is a Russian style meat pie made by hand and then baked. Ooh. Oh man, okay. So it looks like this one is the beef cheese and it's nice and flaky, very hot still on the outside. Let's give this little baby a try. Mmm, mmm. The first thing you taste is the cheese. It tastes like your typical American cheese. Very strong beefy flavor. I will say the outside batter is a little on the thicker side. It's not as thin and flaky as the Piroshkis were used to. I think it's called a breading. Yeah, the breading on the outside. It's, it's very thick. I mean, if you're looking for a quick lunch, one of these bad boys will fill you up. But right away, I taste the nice ground beef. Very beefy flavor, not too salty. There's no sweetness at all. It's just beef, cheese. These things aren't messing around. It tastes almost like, um, not in a bad way, but kind of like a hamburger helper, if you will. That ground beef flavor with cheese texture. But to be fair, the one we had in Seattle wasn't the beef. It was salmon, right? I had a salmon piroshi. I had a cheese one too, I forgot. Go back to the video, guys. Check it out if you haven't already. But you see at the end how dense it is? The outside batter is pretty dense. If you're not sure what the difference is in flavors, the chicken one is easily denoted by its shape because look at this bad boy. It looks like a big round donut. I mean, what? I think these are actually deep fried. The previous piroshki that we had in Seattle, I think they, theirs were baked. I'm pretty sure these do seem like they're deep fried. This one here is the chicken variation, shredded chicken. You can see a ton of herbs in there, some cheese, maybe carrots. Gonna try it out. That one is the chicken, cheese, and mushroom. Mmm, mmm. I really like this one. Wow. The flavors are very prominent. The cheese does give an added moisture to this chicken. The chicken is not dry at all. I honestly thought it would be a little bit on the drier side, but it really is not. I love the herbiness. I wonder what kind of herbs they use. The beef flavor wasn't super strong. It was a little bit more dense because I guess they like tightly pack it down, but this feels a lot more light, airy. You can taste the individual herbs a lot more because the chicken has more of like a base flavor. This is very, very flavorful. I think I highly recommend getting the chicken one. Also, they have another thing that isn't a piroshki, but a lot of people were ordering it, so we had to get some. Wait, this is so good. <laughs> oh man, let me try it, man. I also did notice they spelt the piroshki here with a C. I don't think it's normally spelt with a C, so I'm not sure if there's a difference in that. Let us know in the comments down below. Oh my gosh, I cannot get... <laughs> I can't get used to how massive these things are. Like a little fried dough baby. This, I believe, is another beef variant. Oh, okay. My bad. This is the beef cheese cabbage. The other one was mushroom. Because you can see the cabbage right here. So right off the bat, I can tell the, the difference. This one is more red on the inside. It's not just dark ground beef like the other one. Very bready. 
Mm, okay. This one, right away, I can tell it has a more tomatoey taste to it. More spices involved here. You can see the red in color. I guess that's tomato. So it's like your, what is that dish called? It's a Russian dish, I believe. Beef and cabbage, tomatoey, with the nice helping of cheese. I prefer this one over the other one, I think, because the other one was more like a cheesy hamburger type of flavor, and this is more like a beef and cabbage, tomatoey flavor. And like Felix said, there was also something that caught our eye because a lot of people were ordering it, and it is their fried squid. I'm not gonna lie, it does look very oily. I think this is like probably what they're the other side's known for, the Filipino side. Going for it, cheers. Mm. I feel like the oil flavor kind of overpowers the squid flavor. I think I'd stick with the piroshki at this place. If you do come here, they also have Filipino food, which looked really good. They had like um, mixed plates that you can make. I'm gonna try. It's kind of hard when you're comparing it to piroshki, piroshki in Seattle. Those are like one of the best. Mmm. Okay. Well, let's head on over to our next lunch spot. So this area was called Pioneer Plaza. A ton of people that are working in downtown. A lot of different eateries. Subway, poke, sushi, Italian restaurant. There was a Vietnamese sandwich shop. Never been here, but I guess this is a hidden gem for a lot of the workers in this area. I've been craving a free lunch for a long time, so let's dive into this. We're here at the Pioneer Plaza. Looks like a very popular lunch spot for the people working in the downtown area. Very small, intimate area with a lot of eateries. So we are featuring the lunch spot today, the lunch spot. So I'm trying their special today, which is the herb crusted pork with gravy. Regular plate with spaghetti mac and one scoop of rice. Ooh, and I love that there's gravy all over. I like that they give you a gargantuan, huge piece of pork chop. Although it is a little difficult to cut, work on trying to cut that. Oh man, mm. oh man. Rich gravy, very, very nicely seasoned pork. I think I need to work on my knife skill because that was super tender. I don't know why I had such a hard time cutting it. I think it was the angle or something. I don't know. Pork is very tender, very nicely done. The gravy is a really rich, dark, gravy, almost like a beef gravy, very tasty. It's not one of your loose locomoco type of gravies, it's really rich. Very perfect accompaniment to the herb crusted pork and the herbs. Oh man, it just makes it so much more fragrant and flavorful. Let's get in on that spaghetti mac. I did not know it was gonna be literally spaghetti mac. They just had an option of mac salad and toss out. Normally the local spaghetti mac is more cut up than this, but this is almost like a pasta, a side order of pasta. Very lightly mayo. There's chunks of canned tuna in here, so it's like a tuna mac. Maybe go for the toss salad if you're looking for something healthier, but man, that pork chop, amazing. The star definitely is the pork and the gravy, honestly. And it's a thick cut. It's not like a thin cut. It's pretty thick, so I feel like for pork, this is a pretty decent amount. Felix actually ended up stumbling upon this hidden gem. It is called Tonkatsu Sangi. It is the original owners of Menchankote, and they even took over the recipe for Goma Ichi. If you guys remember Goma Ichi, it is a really long time ago. So Goma Ichi was on Kiyamoku near the Panda Cuisine, I think it was called, right? The, the dim sum place. And then Menchankote used to be um, more towards Sorobo area, but because of the new incoming condos, they actually had to relocate but they stumbled upon this spot here in downtown they just opened two weeks ago so i'm super excited to be supporting them we used to always go to menchangote i know a lot of people were really really sad when menchangote closed so i'm super happy to inform you you can come down to their downtown location again their name is tonkatsu sangi and that's actually their japanese family crest it has the name sangi in it so that's where they got the name anyways guys my mouth is literally watering they only had one mini of the tantan guess who got the mini me it actually worked out so perfectly everything here is made to order they boil the noodles right then and there they torch the chasu right then and there they give you the soup 
in this little container. If you guys don't know what tantan is, it's kind of like a sesame flavored Japanese soup. Originated in China or a Chinese noodles, but Japanese people started to adopt it in their cuisine. So this is the tantan. has a hint of sourness, which I love. I love my ramen with a little bit of sourness. And many of you know tantan as gomate, but gomaichi actually predates gomate. Fun fact. Okay, I need to get into it. My mouth is literally watering. Ramen time, cheers. Mm. Mm. The noodles cook to perfection. This soup, I could literally lick this soup sesame flavor. The broth isn't so thick and it's not super duper oily. That's actually something I really loved about Omaichi. But the char siu. He said this is a specialty made char siu that they don't really make in bulk as well. And this is the original Gomaichi recipe. Felix is asking me how close it is to the original gomaichi recipe. To tell you the truth, I haven't had gomaichi in over 10 years, so who knows if it tastes the same. I, my memory isn't that strong, but I will say it is very tasty. Mm. And if you are a fan of tantan, and if you're in the area, definitely check them out. Mm. So this is the Sangho soup. It's kind of like a sweet sour soup. I've tried it before, I do believe, but I don't I think this was something I used to get a lot. This is kind of more like a Chinese style soup. Ooh. Ooh. If you like sweet sour, I don't know if you guys got this as a kid, but at Panda Express or at you know those like Chinese restaurants, the sweet sour soup. Or is it called sweet sour? Spicy sour? I used to always get it. I don't hot, remember. Oh, oh hot, hot and sour. sour. Yeah. yeah, it has the hot and sour soup flavor. It's salty, kind of like maybe a shoyu base, but it's very sour as well. I want Felix to try his tonkatsu. He's been eyeing me to hurry up to get to that. I'm very excited because if I recall Minchankote's tonkatsu, I always had to order it on the side. And their miso soup comes with each order, nicely breaded, fried to order, dressing, and of course, a sauce container for the tonkatsu. This is a onion vinaigrette type of dressing. Katsu is nice and thick, perfectly fried. It looks extra crispy. And they do use the traditional Japanese bread for the breadcrumbs, the panko batter on the katsu. So very excited. I didn't want to try without anything first. Mm. Oh man, pork. Very tender, very fatty. The batter, very lightly, delicately crunchy, like very light crisp, like just enough to hold all that porky fattiness in. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to take this bite. Mm. Oh man, that sauce is not thick like your local style chicken katsu sauce. It's very light, it's kind of like a type of Japanese Worcestershire sauce. Perfect balance to the katsu. To me, what makes a good tonkatsu is if it's light, delicate, but still at the same time tender, porky flavor. The sauce just accompanies it. It doesn't overpower the katsu. I love this plate. I'd get it once a week if I could. Cabbage now with the onion dressing. That dressing is really good. It's like an onion vinaigrette where it's slightly sour but oniony at the same time. This is the perfect lunch plate before you have to head back to work or if you have a day off. And you can also do a mini with the ramen. Mm. So like I mentioned here at Tonkatsu Sangi, you can do the set, which I highly recommend pro tip. You get a mini ramen on the side. Enjoy yourself a Goma Ichi Tantan and a Menchankote Tonkatsu. <laughs> syrup and so, maple syrup. So coffee comes from the powder region, the big island. So these are both like big island coffee. And the espresso we're using today is our Maui coffee. 100% oh, wow. Maui. So do you guys always stock local coffees? We only use local coffee. We, yes. we roast our own coffee, so every Saturday we roast coffee. We have a little Brevo 
at home, so we know oh, yeah? how hard it is to get the dosing right. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Get legit coffee. So. Alright, yeah, hope you enjoy our coffee. Thank you. Thank you so much. Nice meeting you, Fred. Thank you, nice meeting you. Fred and John. Thank you, John. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, Foodie Ohana, we are still in the Pioneer Plaza area, but we came across a coffee shop called Downtown Coffee. And shout out to Nicole or Nick T819 on Instagram. She actually recommended us this spot a while ago, but we finally are able to come out here and we're gonna be trying the coffee. And I apologize if the table is shaking because Amanda's elbows <laughs> are doing this. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, yeah, sure. yeah, of course. Sorry to bother you. Uh, I just wanted to give you a sample of our downtown blend. Oh, it's, thank it's you. It's also 100% white coffee. It's got cow coffee, white oil coffee, and mommy coffee. Oh, it's a blend? Then, yeah, it's all Hawaii coffee. It's oh, our wow. most popular thank like, you. coffee that Hawaii seals of quality. Program run by the Hawaii Department of Agriculture, right? So then they're the ones who help like with this kind of advertising like that. Thank you. Yeah. We appreciate it. Oh, no, thank you. Yeah. So Fred at Downtown Coffee was so nice to give us a little sample of their freshly roasted in-house Hawaii blend coffee. He said this is a blend of Wailua, Maui, and Big Island coffee, I believe. And it's funny because I did mention how we have our teeny little Brevo at home and we like to experiment with the grinds and I was just letting them know how we appreciate how difficult it is to make the perfect espresso. We failed quite a bit before <laughs> we could even make a decent tasting one. Big thank you again to Fred and John for the hospitality. Can't yeah. wait to try the coffees. So we did get two desserts as well. These are the ones that they said they make in-house. So these are the two, but we're, let's try the coffee first. Yes, before it gets too warm. So we did get our coffees iced because it is like pretty hot. Like midday right now, so why not get a nice cup of iced coffee? So I got the maple white mocha latte with almond milk and I do believe he said this is the Maui blend coffee. So I got the 100% Kau Americano which is basically beans from Kau of Big Island and is simply an espresso shot poured over water, iced water which makes it Americano. Cheers. No sugar or milk. This is my first time trying Kau coffee. Normally it's Kona coffee. That's what everyone's used to trying or hearing. This one is a slightly more fruity than your Kona coffee. Yeah, I was gonna say this Maui one is a bit um, more fruity. It's not that acidic at all. No, not, not at all. too bitter. It, it does have a bitterness that comes with coffee, but it's not a sharp, distasteful bitterness, which I love. Very smooth, just kind of velvety almost on the tongue. I really enjoy this blend. I think it's more of a medium roast, not a dark roast at all. And it does have, yeah, like you said, more floral notes to it. The thing about mine is because it's like sweetened with milk and stuff, it kind of hides the natural flavor of the coffee. But I do feel like the white mocha does complement it as well. You know what's crazy? Just now as the flavors are settling, I taste caramel. I didn't add anything in there. Just kind of let it oh, resonate. Yours is a lot more floral than mine's is. But let it resonate a little bit, coat the tongue. I taste caramel. Yeah. I don't it has know like what an it after is. note. That's crazy. This one is a matcha tart. And then the other one is a Kona chocolate. One of them is gluten free. <laughs> I, I believe this one is because it's a dense chocolate. And also, they're made in house. These two, These specifically. Two. The they, other ones, they said they get it from the Baker Dudes. Down the street, let us know if you want us to cover them. They make awesome pastries. Okay, which one are you going for? I mean, Masha this has a chocolate? heart on it, so I'm guessing this is yours. <laughs> My favorite segment, the dessert segment. Oh, matcha tart. Ooh, looks like there's a lot of macadamia nuts on here as well. Cross section guys, very generous slice indeed. Both desserts were 5 16 each. Oh, this is actually cut in half. Oh, nice. I should have pretended like, Ugh! yeah, <laughs> broke it right down the middle. And this is the chocolate. Oh, wow, this looks really fudgy. Cheers. Whoa. This is like a super fudgy brownie. And it's not too sweet. Even though you can see the powdered sugar and the deep chocolate, it's not super sweet. This isn't your standard tart. This kind of almost has a, I want to say biscotti type of texture, but not as dense. This will go really good with the hot latte. It's almost like in between a biscotti and that treat we had in Disney, that Filipino treat, polabok. 
Remember that? Remember Disney? Palabok is the noodles. Oh yeah, okay, sorry, not palabok. Our server did mention that for good luck, or if you have a wish you want to make, eat one of these cubes, and as you're chewing, say poroboro three times. Is it poroboron or just o? But that thing I had to say it three times as I was chewing, put a flashback on it. Poroboron, yeah. Overall, that's what it it's kind of reminds me of. Here at Downtown Coffee, they roast their coffees in-house. They also ship their beans. The seal of approval is that green stamp right there. That it is indeed 100% Hawaii grown coffee beans. Oroboro, Oroboro, right? No? To me, it doesn't have a very strong matcha flavor. I think I like this one. Right up my alley. That reminds me of, have you guys ever had Roy's chocolate? A higher percentage of cacao. All right, Furi Ohana, that about wraps up today's episode of Downtown Eateries. We had an awesome time. We sure hope you guys did as well. We're super happy to be supporting these local businesses hidden, tucked away here in downtown. We hope you guys can check them out. As always, we leave the links down in the description below. If you like this kind of content, please give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking that subscribe button down below. And we will see you guys on the next video. Right, Foodie Ohana, until the next adventure, explore your inner foodie, enjoy your local coffee and eateries. Peace out! Bye guys! Oh, and uh, Fourth Street Mall, oh, very small, very small. That's no, those. So, all right, Foodie Ohana, Felix. But, anyways, I got one of each because we. Oh yeah, I wasn't looking. So There's much room on my side. You don't. Okay. It feels like it tastes like your. Look at the fork. Oh man. Oh man, I can't have that in there. I feel like I'm getting bit by everything. Yeah, same here. There's a mosquito. There is one, right? Yeah. I, I got bit. You have long pants on too. Oh no, this is a bad area. Should we get out of here? No. Mm. Oh man, my legs. They're on fire. Where is the mosquito? I don't know, it was on my calf earlier. It likes muscular things. Bro, uh, these birds have no... Oh man. Okay, we're getting attacked by birds. We're getting attacked by mosquitoes. I think we should relocate. I'm trying very hard not to spill this hot yeah. soup all over myself. And... <laughs> okay, it's a little on the finger, but that's okay. So I got the maple, might woke up. Might woke up. Wait, where's the coffee bean? In here. Oh.